muscles, which are the big long muscles along your spine, um, those like rope muscles along your spine. And then in between each vertebrae, you also have your multifidus muscle, muscles, which are tiny, and they connect one vertebrae to the next. And the combination of these groups of muscles along with a whole bunch of ligaments and fascia is very stabilizing for the spine. But when we get tense and tight, and you know, who isn't these days with hunching over computers and hunching to the cold and hunching with anxiety and all the things that we are stressed with, um, we can get a lot of tension along those muscles along our spine. And when we get a little bound, especially in our thoracic spine, it can impact the way we breathe. So um, if you wanna go back into the library and take a look at yesterday's class on how the breath and the nervous system interrelate with each other, it would be a good one to do. Um, but it's the sense that if we have a lot of mobility in our rib cage, um, we can access a little bit more capacity for breathing. If our diaphragm is free, we can access a little bit more capacity for breathing. And some of the interconnection of our rib cage and our diaphragm has to do with these muscles along our spine. So we're gonna work with freeing up those muscles today so that everything starts to kind of ripple into openness and freedom a little bit more. So it's kind of like slipping into the stream wherever you like to slip into the stream. If you know your diaphragm's real tight, then maybe that's where you need to slip in. But sometimes we can work with trying to get you know back bends and open ourselves up and all this freedom and realize that, oh wait, maybe some of the tension that I'm feeling um, is just from those muscles along the spine that need to be freed up. Um, and this doesn't necessarily mean just stretching these muscles. So there's a big difference between creating hydrated, um, supple uh, tissue in our body, muscles, fascia, ligaments, tendons, um, versus just being really stretchy and bendy, right? So um, to me, there's less concern about how flexible you are and more concern about how responsive your muscles are in any moment, whether it's to respond with strength or stability or to respond with openness, but mostly just to respond with mobility. So um, mobility is slightly different than flexibility. So that's what we're gonna work with today with these is to cultivate some um, some mobility in our breath and in our spine. So um, the other thing before we get started, I wanted to recommend, because I feel like I'm always recommending something, right? So these are called miracle balls. Um, that it's called the miracle ball method. I have no idea who the woman's name is. Um, Elaine Patron is the woman who, who um, developed these. And they come in a set of two with a little cool book about how to use them. And what I like about them versus like Lynn was just saying, oh, I have a foam roller, I can use that. These are smushier and they have a, um, you know, a valve where you can make them bigger or smaller in the sense of tension. And the smush factor of these is what I think is really good about them is that you can put them in your ribs and against your chest and in your back and in your armpits and all these places where a foam roller would just be a little too intense. Um, and it can really start to open up some of the capacities for breathing that we're working with. And the other thing I use for that besides the um, rolled towel is this, it's called a Gertie ball and it has a valve, you know, like with the pin that you can pull out and this can get extremely smushy. You can make it uh, like half the um, width of this. And this is really good to roll your chest and your diaphragm along because you can lay on your belly and it's pretty smushy and you can get a lot of freedom into all the like nooks and crannies that you don't want something super hard if you're laying on your you know face down so a gertie ball the miracle balls um if you're interested in you know having some extra little things around to help you with some self-massage those are some things i recommend okay let's do some yoga sorry for the chattiness okay so close your eyes and sit up straight and tall and before we kind of come into stillness, I want you to just first have some movement. So just like we move around in our cat cows a lot in the beginning, let's do that here. So just start noticing um, any, you know, maybe you want to spin on your pelvis a little bit. Maybe you want to stretch one side or twist or hunch and open your spine, whatever feels good. Just get a little mobility maybe in your shoulders, your neck, just wiggle around until you feel like you can be still for a moment. And then let's find our breath. See what it feels like to rest into stillness. Just that little teeny bit of movement, movement. Did it give you some sense of openness? 
awareness. And let's come into the breath. Where are you breathing easily into your body? Notice, try to follow the, the comfortable, open, free pathway that your breath has right now. Are your nostrils free? Do your sinuses feel open? Is the breath traveling into your trachea well? Or are you not open? Do you feel like one side of your nose is a little more closed than the other? Are you a little stuffed up or dried out from the heat being in your home? And when you feel the breath touching into your lungs themselves, what moves? What makes room for your lungs to expand? For your lungs to collapse? Can you notice the rib cage and whether or not it feels pliable, mobile or not? Can you notice whether your diaphragm has some freedom? Is it moving well? Is it a little sleepy? Are there any little spots in your diaphragm or rib cage that are a little stuck? Are you um, noticing that your neck and shoulders want to take over for your breath at all? Can you feel how your collarbones and arm bones move a bit as you breathe in and out? And then let's notice those little articulations of where your ribs meet your spine, your vertebrae. Travel into the back of your body and just notice what's there. Go ahead and bring your palms together at your heart and bow in, offer an intention. What can adaptability, mobility, good breathing, all these things we're trying to cultivate today, how can they serve you? Not just in your body, but in your efforts today out in the world, in your thoughts. Let's release the hands and come onto your back. Okay, so let's come to lie down. Bring your little towel with you. And don't worry if you don't have one. Um, you can just get a sense of what we're doing. <clears throat> All right, so let's lie down on our back and stretch first. So reach your arms up overhead. If you have a little back bend that lives, let that be a very invigorating thing through your thoracic spine. Extend through your arms and your legs and maybe reach one side a little longer and then reach the other side a little bit longer, just waking up the body to whatever place is comfortable. All right, and then go ahead and release your lay arms down and bring your knees into your chest and rock a little bit from side to side. Start to notice the breath. So see what you can do to pay attention to where the breath moves you, where the breath doesn't move you. Steady the exhales, nice and long. Let's circle the knees a few times each direction. All right, and then right knee into the chest and swirl around through your feet. Feeling some good compression of your knee and your hip. And then change sides, left knee into your chest, right leg straight. Feel the openness across your feet. Just wiggle some things around, wake things up. And then bring your other knee in and open up both knees out and in. So finding the sense of um, what your hips are capable of today. You know, how's your range of motion in your hip joints? And then just for a moment, grab your two blocks. 
Okay, and put your feet together, the knees apart, put blocks underneath your knees, and bring yourself into Supta Konasana. Who would have thought we'd start our practice with Supta Baddha Konasana, right? So even though you're probably geared up for movement, let's see if we can just hit the pause for a few breaths. Let your arms open out and feel yourself open. Make so much room in the center of your body so that the opportunity for your rib cage, your diaphragm to move is available to you. Melt the shoulders into the floor, melt the head into the floor. See if you can feel the, you know, the, the way the diaphragm moves down, the organs displaced. See if you can feel your pelvic floor also make room for those displaced organs. yourself be free. Melt everything into the floor just for a moment. Have a conscious letting go. All right, and then let's go ahead and remove the blocks. Bring them next to you again. Bring the knees into the chest. Pick your head up and tighten into a little ball. And then let's open things out. Spread your limbs wide, wiggle your toes and your fingers out there on your edges, and then exhale, knees and chest in. One more time, inhale and expand. Exhale, throw it in. All right, so roll over onto your side. We are gonna do this um, roll with the uh, towel in just a moment, but first I just want you to have a little bit more warming in the spine. So spread out your hands, spread out your feet, curl your toes under, and let's find some cat-cows. So arching and rounding the spine, some of these muscles, see if you can start to feel along your spine. And then let's swirl around. Let your rib cage move, push it out to one side, push it out to the other side. Feel any kind of circling or swirling and just notice, see, see if you can pay close attention to the space where your rib cage meets your vertebrae. All right, and then stretch back towards child's pose. Take your hips back toward the heels and lengthen here. Maybe your arms easily go into that position. Maybe they don't. So just be where you are, extending through the spine, relaxing your head. Let's walk the hands over to the left side of the mat. And of course, we feel this beautiful stretch in the outside rim of the right side of your body. And let this open up those stretch receptors in the lungs themselves. So you feel the lung tissue. But also, so take a breath noticing that, but also see if you can notice the little muscles that connect one vertebrae to each other, the multifidus. So those little, you know, sticky outy parts on the sides of your vertebrae, one to the next. See if you can open those up as we stretch from one, on one side. And then come back to center and walk the hands over to the right. So now the left side of your body is opening up. First, just feel the outside rim of your body stretch open. And just like usual, we want to, you know, we want our stretch to not be um, hardened. So is there mobility through your breath? Uh, can you feel the stretch receptors? Can you feel your lungs stretch? Not just your ribs and your muscles, but can you feel the lungs touch the ribs? All right, and then come into a little bit of awareness right along your spine. Breathe into that space right along the left side of your spine where your vertebrae and your ribs meet. Can you feel those little muscles that connect one vertebrae to the next? And don't worry if you can't, but just bring your interoception into that place. Then come back to center. Come up onto all fours. Let's do that twist we always do. Right arm lifting to the sky. Slide that shoulder under and feel now. Of course, it's a twist, but see if you can sense into that same space where the ribs touch the vertebrae. 
There's lots of muscles. See if you can feel all the expansion and the muscles between your shoulder blades that connect your shoulder blades to your ribs. Breathe your breath into the back side of your body. See if you can feel your lungs touch up against the ribs there. And then come back up, reaching that arm to the sky and place your hand down onto the ground. Second side, left arm lifting, bring your arm through, slide that shoulder down, finding your breath, seeing what feels good here. As you open things up, can you feel the breath? Make sure your neck is relaxed. Make sure your head is relaxed. Try not to take tension in places that is unnecessary for your body right now. Go ahead and come on up and lift that arm back to the sky. Now we're gonna come back onto our back, onto our little rolled um, towel. So this is a little tricky for some people to figure out the way that you move on this. Um, so I'm just going to demonstrate and kind of talk you through it. So we're gonna start with this uh, pie on our shoulder blades, like the top edge of our shoulder blades. So there's a few different things to, to master in working with this. We're gonna obviously bring this down the spine for a little self-massage and hydration of the discs, the vertebrae, all the fascia, everything there. So you wanna push off your feet so that you're rocking your body top to bottom. So you wanna go you know, uh, um, in, this, in the direction of your spine in the rocking. And you should try to keep your pelvis really quiet so it's very common for people to do like a pelvic tilt and then a pelvic arch. And you wanna keep your pelvis really quiet and passive in this pose. So when you push off your heels, you're just pushing your spine up, down, up, down. And then once you got that rhythm going, we're gonna do a few different movements with the arms as we do each spot along our spine. So the arms come out in front of you. So they're right in front of your chest. So you can see your hands in front of you. And then we're gonna lift our arms, if it's comfortable, over your head, all the while still rocking with your body. Breathing. And then arms back to over your chest. And then we're gonna turn our arms and our head to the right. And then we're gonna pick our arms up and turn our arms and head to the left. So um, that's a fair amount of stuff to do all at once okay so try to, your thighs might start to get a little um, fatigued but try to keep your pelvis quiet and then you move down so move down the notch so the, the um, roll towel is a little bit lower on your spine and let's do the same thing so the arms the palms are right in front of you um, over your chest and then you're going to lift the arms over your head all the while rocking breathing relaxing, melting, and then the arms come back over your chest and then you turn. Bring your arms over to one side, still rocking. And then arms back up and bring them to the other side. So you can go at any pace you wanna go. So the whole purpose here is that when our arms are in front of us, we're in flexion a little bit, a little bit of flexion of the spine. When our arms come over our head, we're in a little bit of extension of the spine. And when our arms and head turn from one side to the other, we're in a little bit of rotation in the spine. So the only missing um, pattern of spinal movement is lateral bending, which you can do by putting this roll under, laying on your side and putting this roll underneath your ribs or using those miracle balls or the virgin ball. So as you go down your spine, you're gonna find all sorts of nooks and crannies. You know, you may find a spot that is amazing and you're like, oh, I could do this all day. So hang out there, there's no rush. Um, you know, if you don't get around to the whole spine and in, in this time frame that we have here, you can, I keep this rolled towel around my house all the time and it's just available for doing this whenever you feel like it. The, um, as you go down, make sure you're breathing, make sure you're melting, make sure you're rocking, keeping the pelvis neutral and quiet. So you're just gently pushing off your feet to make your head and tail kind of go up and down. When you get lower um, into your low back, and you're probably not there anywhere near there yet, but as you get into the low back, 
sometimes you can lose a little bit of the sensation because you have an arch in your lumbar spine. So you can do a couple things when you get to that spot. You can bring your knees to your chest and just rock a little bit that way and forget the arm movements. There's lots of ways that you can play with getting um, the sensation along your spine. And then usually once you get back down toward your sacrum, um, you can put your feet down and you can even possibly straighten your legs at that point and just um, kind of flex and point your feet to rock off your heels to get the feeling through your sacrum. So some of this is trial and error when I've taught this in the studio. Some people get it right away and some people do not get it right away. So if you're struggling, try to have the, the biggest piece of your awareness be about keeping the pelvis really quiet. So if you tend to do a pelvic, um, you know, like uh, into an anterior and, pel and posterior tilt of the pelvis, you just want to master keeping that kind of neutral so that really you're just moving and working the spine. The breath is so important here, so, so important here. You want to maintain that capacity to have the breath touch into all that fascia that you're awakening. So, you know, the backs of our bodies, we can't see. A lot of times there's spots in our middle of our back that we can't touch and if your shoulders are a little tight. So there's, there's a lot of absenteeism back there sometimes. So working with a, a little role like this can bring a lot of awareness into the back body breath, into the space that needs to move for our breathing to do really well. Even our diaphragm, um, you know, we connect, the diaphragm is a dome that moves through the whole torso. So, you know, we, we need to, we often feel it right in the front of our bodies, but we have a little less awareness in the attachments of our diaphragm in the back. So just use this as an opportunity to get to know your breathing and your muscles in the back of your body. So I'm not sure where everybody is because everybody's got their screen blacked out, but whatever um, spot you're at, um, I should have probably been talking and doing just so I had a good sense of where you are at. But this is a great thing to, um, to do on a very regular basis. I try to do it at least three times a week or so um, to just keep a lot of the pliability and mobility in the back of my body. It's unbelievable how much tension we can hold there from being on a computer all day. So if you're spending a lot of time hunched over with um, you know, art projects or cooking or on a computer, whatever you're doing, this is a great thing to help you. All right, so let's try to finish up. So um, I don't know where you're at, but just see what it feels like to kind of get toward your sacrum and let things uh, move around there. And hopefully you like this. It can be very meditative. Um, so I'm hoping the rocking, ro the rocking aspect, any rocking um, is really soothing for the parasympathetic nervous system in the body. So this can be a really great way to just help you calm um, even without all the great things it's doing for your back. Okay, so let's go ahead and move that off to the side. Bring your knees to your chest, roll over onto your side and come all the way up um, into onto all fours. So find a little moment of a cat-cow, find your breath. Notice if your back feels a little bit more awake than it might have felt earlier and turn this into dog pose when you're ready. So stretch out through your hands, stretch out through your feet, feel that connection with the earth yield in and feel the full extension now in your spine. Can you let the breath touch into the back of the body well? Feel the femur bones lift up into the hips and stretch through your legs, open up the bottom of your feet melt through your head. Enjoy the way the diaphragm works when you're inverted. All right, and then let's walk our feet forward and come into Uttanasana. Feel free to bend the knees a lot here so that the spine is mobile, and then wiggle things around, move things around. You can shake and roll and eventually find your way up to stand. And we're going to now do um, some of that bouncing and rocking on our feet. So feet on the ground and you can lift your heels up and just let this come into your uh, spine. You know, so this jiggling, 
there's a lot of, you know, compress and release and compress and release. Uh, and see if you can just let that loosen up your spine a little bit. All right. Take your feet a little wider than your hips and we're just going to swing from side to side. Okay. How's your breath? Open things up. Put your arms anywhere you want them to be. Let things open up in those attachments of your rib cage. And then relax on down. So now I want you to move your hips in a big old circle. Okay. And then go the other direction, moving your hips in a big old circle. Relax, inhale, lift your arms to the sky, reaching upward, open up through your chest, expand through your heart, okay? And then exhale and fold forward, relax your body, relax your head. Inhale for a halfway lift, extend the spine longer, exhale and melt back down. Step your left foot back, your right foot is coming forward now, see what it feels like to open your body up, feeling the legs start to expand, feel your heart open. Let's breathe here. As you straighten your legs, round the back just a little bit, tuck your chin toward your chest, and then come forward, shoulder blades moving toward each other. Let's try that one more time. And then find your way into a lunge. Rise up, we're gonna reach our arms, if you're comfortable, up to the sky. Take a deep breath. Exhale, cactus your arms. Inhale, arms up. Exhale. See if you can start to work some of those back body muscles. All right, now we're going to come forward, rounding the spine, shoulder blades wide. Inhale, open the arms into a cactus. Now be very protective of your lumbar spine when you're doing this so that you're not just, you know, moving in the lumbar spine. We're trying to get into the thoracic spine here. All right, and then reach the arms up one more time. We're gonna grab onto the wrist and open the side body up. Breathe here. Hopefully you're still okay in your lunge. We're gonna turn this into a twist. Elbow on your knee, hand on a block, wherever you wanna be. You can even go elbow past your knee and palms together. Take the twist that's right for you. Find your breath. Let your diaphragm move against the twist. Lift that thigh bone, your back leg. And then release. Arms up one more time. Exhale, hands down. Walk your back foot forward. Fold in half. Let the back relax and soften. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale and release back down. Step your other foot back, left foot is forward, right foot is back. How's your breath? Take a moment to really notice, are you stable? Are you grounded? Are you able to yield? Is your body breathing well? Okay. Square the hips as you straighten your leg, round your back a little bit, tuck your chin. Bend your knee and stretch your heart forward. Going back and forth a couple of times. Notice the connection of movement of the breath and movement of the spine. And then as you're ready, find your way into a lunge. Stabilize your stance. So put yourself where you need to be and then rise up, bringing the arms to the sky. And always you can make a different choice if your arms are not happy in this position. Find the extension, exhale. Kind of like you're pulling yourself up on a chin up bar. Find the breath. What can you do to integrate the rib cage to feel the back body move? To feel that your lumbar spine is not compressed when you're doing this. You're still able to breathe. All right, and then we're gonna open and close. Round the back a little bit, tuck the chin. Inhale, open the chest without compressing the lumbar spine. Keep your core stable. A few times, moving with the breath. Arms back up to the sky when you're ready. 
finding that twist. And even if you, you know, if you don't want to open up with your or both arms, you can just do it with one arm. So find what's working for you. Restabilize your legs. I know we're in this position a while, so find your strength, commit to it. And then we're going to turn this into a twist. Elbow on your knee, elbow past your knee, hand on the block or on the floor. So any variation of a twist that's perfect for your body today, find the breath. See if you can breathe into the back of the body. All right, release the hands down onto the ground. Back to dog pose. Feel the feet, spread them out. Let your thighs, the fatigue in your thigh release. Inhale, come forward into a plank. So hold yourself steady here. Notice what it feels like. See if you can have a little bit of protraction of the shoulder blades. So push the floor away and then a little melting of the shoulder blades. All right, put your knees down onto the ground and come all the way to the floor. Open your breath up. Deep inhale, exhale, coming along down toward the floor. One more time. All right, we're starting to work some of these muscles along the back side of our body. So take your arms like um, cactus, and we're gonna bring our elbows just a little bit lower than our shoulders so we can feel the back body and then lift on up, lift your chest. Try to have your hands in line with your elbows instead of elbows falling down. Breathe deeply, shoulders away from the ears, connect the core, and then exhale and release. Put your head on your hands, pick your feet up, and go left and right. Okay, come up onto your hands and your knees. Find a little movement of the spine. So push your ribs out to the side. Do a little circle through your rib cage. Loosen some things up. And then we're going to find those multifidus muscles. Bird dog is one of the best poses to wake up and strengthen those little muscles. So take your leg, your right leg straight back behind you. Take your left arm out in front of you and connect. Feel all the muscles along your spine. Integrate the core so you're not just holding yourself with your back body, but can you feel the, the, all the muscles along your spine supporting you? Are you able to breathe deeply despite the effort that has to happen and all the muscles that wrap around your ribcage? All right, so let's go ahead and place that hand and knee down onto the ground and come to your second side. Stretch that left leg out. Reach the arm forward, stabilize, breathe deeply, integrate front and back body, feel the balance of left and right hemispheres finding each other, feel the muscles along your spine, feel your breath. There's so much to explore in such a simple pose. All right, and then go ahead and relax. Find symmetry, a cat-cow. and then turn that up to dog pose. Stretching open through your rib cage, binding the breath, opening things up. And then walk both feet forward, fold in half. Uttanasana, relax your head. Feel free to wiggle around, moving around, anything you wanna do, rise up. I've done this a few times recently, and I, if you have somebody in your home, with you that can do this to you. Let's all pound on our backs and on our ribs a little bit. Okay, so you can take the, the you know, um, circle of your thumb and index finger and put that against you or open hands, kind of scoop hands. And you know, we can't get our, the backs of our bodies. So truly, if you have a partner or child or somebody in your home, have them, you know, smack on their backs and have them smack on yours. Just let things loosen up, okay? And get into the back of your ribs as much as your body is able to touch. All right, and then bounce one more time. Jiggle things around. Move your, move your rib cage around in any way that feels good. 
All right, we're gonna lean forward, put your hands on your knees, and I want you to round the back, tuck your chin, inhale to a little bit of a back bend, stick your sit bones big and wide, okay? A couple times, rounding the spine, navel to back, chin to chest, exhale, take a breath, and then relax. Inhale, rise all the way up, arms to the sky. Let's turn to the side of your mat and take your feet wide apart. Turn your right foot out and your left foot back. Take a deep breath. You know, we haven't done much movement in the external plane, so take your time getting there if you want. We're gonna find a partial panasana. Feel the feet root down into the earth. Ground yourself. And then I want you to experiment. Push the left side of your rib cage out and then push the right side of your rib cage out. Just a couple of times, go back and forth between your two sides, just a little bit, nothing too extreme, and then find both sides expanding. So a lot of times when we come into this pose, especially when we bring our arm up overhead, we push that side of our rib cage out and we collapse the underbelly. So see if both sides of your rib cage can lengthen and expand simultaneously. Open the body up, press your feet into the earth. Feel the expansion of your heart, the collarbones. Let your ribs open. Okay, keep your legs in this position, stabilize and go just the opposite. Come into reverse warrior. Now this side of our body tends to collapse. The left side of your body tends to shrink up. So how can you find extension in both sides instead of just collapsing through the one side? Okay, straighten your leg and find your way into triangle pose. So bring your hand onto a block or onto your leg, wherever it goes, be really light so that you're not pushing into your knee. If you're a hypermobile person, be really grounded. Try to reduce your hypermobility. Open across your collarbones, stretch open the chest, find the breath. Can you feel those little multifidus muscles holding you up here a bit? Can you root your feet? All right, go ahead and come on up. Walk your feet straight for a moment. Bring your arms up or out wherever they are. You can turn your feet out just a little bit. Take a deep breath in, exhale. Feel the muscles along the back side of your body engage. Inhale, reach up. Exhale like you're pulling yourself up on the chin up bar. Rise up again, turn your feet to the left. Parzo Konasana on this side. Root your feet, ground yourself, elbow on your knee. Open across your chest. Let's do the same thing. Just find a little bit of concavity, convex, back and forth with the rib cage to see how mobile your rib cage can feel. How's your breath? And then try to lengthen both sides simultaneously. This underbelly shoulder, the left shoulder, let it move away from the ears. Find the extension through both sides of your ribs, both sides of your spine. Root your feet. Let your diaphragm open up. Try not to let the breath live in your neck. How are your feet? Can you feel the grounding? All right, and then we're gonna find a reverse warrior. Once again, try not to just smush. Open up both sides of your rib cage. Even if you have to come out of your lunge a little bit to do so, open up both sides of the rib cage and find where you're able to be spacious and free. Maybe look up. Okay, and then straighten your leg and find your way to triangle pose. Rest your hand. If you're using a block, be whatever you're using, putting your hand on your leg or a block, be light. See if you can feel some of the muscles along your spine help you be here. They're not overbearing the pose, but they're assisting. Feel the roots of your feet. Be very careful to not hyperextend your front knee. Open up both sides of your ribs. How's your breath? Does it feel spacious? Does it feel labored? 
Is your, are you able to keep the exhales a little bit longer? Are your neck and shoulders trying to do all the work for you? All right, let's go ahead and come on up. Find your way back to neutral. So the feet are turned out, okay? Just for a moment, reach the arms up. Exhale, goddess pose and bring your arms back. Inhale, exhale, bend your elbows like a chin up bar. Find your breath. All right, let's be here. Round the spine, tuck the chin. Inhale, open up. Exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin. Inhale, open up. Straighten your legs. Flip back to the front of your mat, dog pose. Extending through the spine, feel free to move things around. Wiggle through your hips, your shoulders, your neck. Now, when we come through passing into a plank, let's round our back to get there, like roll through it, and then lift your chest forward, and then roll back toward dog pose one more time. Roll forward into a plank. Lift your chest now, open your heart, place your knees down onto the ground, come all the way to the floor. Inhale, arms are down at the sides, elbows hugging in. Think of that V that we're trying to get toward the spine. Inhale, lift up, maybe your legs too, maybe just the torso. And then exhale, head melts back down. Come up on tall fours, wiggle around in your spine, finding your breath. And then come to sit, grab a blanket to sit on. Yeah. Stretch your left leg straight out. Bring your right knee into your chest. Have your right sit bone and your right heel line up toward each other. They don't have to touch or anything, but just have them on that line together. We're going to open up the twist. So take your left hand behind you. The right hand is going to come on the inside of the right knee. Open the chest and twist to the left. The left leg is straight out in front of you. Plug your left heel into the hip. Find your breath, drop the shoulders. Have a little pressure of elbow and knee against each other. And then come back to center. Pick up that knee. Round in for a moment. Tuck your chin toward your chest. And then let's straighten our right leg straight out. Left heel is coming um, toward the sit bone. So what I mean is try not to take that foot out or too far in. So line up the heel with the sit bone, depending on how much flexion you have available in your hip and your knee, you'll have your foot closer or further away. All right, so the right hand is behind us. The right leg is pointing um, straight, kneecap up toward the sky, toes up toward the sky instead of letting our leg fall out. Bring the left elbow inside the left knee. Press left elbow and knee against each other a bit. Not a whole lot. So remember, whenever we're twisting, we're trying not to push bone on bone too much. It's just there for support and stability. Kind of a jump off point for your twisting. Open your breath, drop the shoulders, let the collarbones broaden. The palm is facing out toward the left or toward the right. Engaging a little bit of the back side of your rotator cuff. Okay, and then relax and melt back down. Crisscross your legs and then switch them because you always crisscross them that way. So let's go the road less traveled. Find your breath. Sit up straight and tall. Interlace your fingers. Press your palms straight up in the air. Open the chest up. And then we're going to turn this into the twist, into a twist. Going left, bring the right hand on left knee and twist to the left. Drop the shoulders. Notice if you're pushing your rib cage forward, if you're overarching the back, try to find neutrality. A nice neutral lumbar spine. Relax the shoulders. Maybe turn your head all the way or maybe turn your head the opposite direction. What feels good? 
And then come back to center, change sides, lift that arm all the way up in the air, bring the hand to the outside of the knee and find your way here. Finding the breath. All right, and then come back to center. Hands on your knees, round the spine like a cat cow, tuck your chin toward your chest. Inhale, open up your ribs. Lift your head, touch your teeth, and lift your chin. All right, and then relax. Okay, let's go ahead and take, uh, we're gonna take Janna Shashasana. So I'm still on the blanket, you don't have to be. I'm also going to use a block. You don't have to. I'm also going to use a strap. So I'll show you all the ways you can use props. We're going to take our um, left leg. I mean, I'm sorry, our right leg straight out. Bend your left knee. I'm going to put a block underneath to support myself. And then I'm going to use a strap on my foot to support myself. So if you have a bum knee, definitely support it with a block. If your knee falls easily, you don't need a block underneath your knee. Lift up through your spine come forward be really mindful that we're not overdoing this stretch the femur bones grounding feel the spine grow it's okay to bend your knee as much as you want this straight leg feel free to bend your knee heck you can put a whole nother block underneath your knee if you want to have some serious bend going on okay. tuck your chin toward your chest and let the back body start to stretch Come up, open up the leg out to the side, and we're gonna find the extension. So root down through the left sit bone, like you have a weighted sandbag on it, and stretch open through your rib cage. Drop the sit bone down. So, you know, of course you might feel this in your hip or your side ribs, but see if you can also feel those muscles along your spine begin to open. How is your breath? If you don't want your arm up, you can keep your arm down. Okay, and then come back to center. Bring two knees into your chest for a moment. Round in, tuck your chin toward your chest. And then let's change sides. So now our left leg is straight out. Our right knee is bent. Feel free to support underneath your right knee with a blanket or a block if you need it. Feel free to use a strap around your foot if you want to. Lift up, feel your femur bone root, bend your knee as much as you want, and find your way a little bit forward. Once you get to a place where your spine is in a happy place, tuck your chin toward your chest so you start to feel those muscles along the back side of your body stretch and open. Feeling the femur bone root back into the hip joint and move into the earth. Stretch through the foot. Okay, come on up. Bring the leg out to the side. Finding the breath here. Open up the rib cage. Maybe your arm comes over your head. Maybe your shoulder doesn't like that. And you keep your hand on the ground or you know on a block or on your thigh. So just go where you go, open up the side of the body and take advantage, breathe well, relax the neck and shoulders. All right, let's go ahead and come on out of there. Come off of your perch, move everything off to the side. We're gonna come onto our back and bring your knees to your chest. Rock a little bit, left and right. See what your back is feeling like. Let's come into happy baby pose. Hold your feet, knees coming toward your chest. Bend your knees, let your back rock a little bit. Go left and right here. Start to stretch some of those muscles. Feel the breath move through your body. And then you get to decide whether this last thing before Shavasana is available to you or not. So you can rock a little bit. I feel like I'm gonna smash my face against my table if I do this too much. But feel free to you know, rock. You can even bring your knees up over your um, head and just rock into some rocking cloud. 
And this could be a very tiny little rocking, or it can be all the way to plow pose and all the way to sitting up. So just decide where your body wants to be. And then we're going to find Supta Baddha Konasana, just like we did in the beginning. Support with some blankets or some blocks underneath your knees, underneath your thighs, wherever it's comfortable. And let your body rest down. Okay. Open your arms out to the sides. Take a moment to just be here. If this is not feeling good to you, I would suggest putting your calves up on a chair or on a couch so that you can also um, rest with your knees supported that way. Find your breath, find the openness of the body. Breathe deeply. As you transition to Shavasana, feel free to do a little twist from side to side. And also feel free if you have, I don't know what your you know, space is looking like, but if you have it available to you to put your calves up on something, like I'm putting them up on the edge of my couch. If you have the availability to have your shins, your calves up on something like a chair or a couch, I would suggest this for Shavasana. It will help your back relax from all the work we did. Um, but maybe that's not available to you. And if not, try supporting underneath your knees. If you have two blocks and a blanket, you can put the two blocks long ways against each other. So they become a surface that's long enough to put your knees on, on and then a blanket on top of that so that your knees can be supported with something a little softer than just the blocks. All right, so whatever you're doing, melt. What can you do to help your body let go right now? How's the breath? Can you feel some mobility in the rib cage? Even as you lie down here, do you have a little bit more capacity to move the breath? Is there a way for you to melt? into the earth well. What part of you is resisting that? Can you bring your attention, your compassion to the parts of you that are holding? You know, we don't hold for no reason. So be compassionate as you teach your body the safety of letting go, spaciousness of letting go. Feel it in your face. Relax through your sinuses. Rest the tongue right at the root. Feel your jaw slack. The shoulders are settled, the base of the skull open and free. Enjoy your breath.
Okay, let's begin to deepen our breathing again. Start to move the body any way that feels good. find a way onto our side and when you get there when you come onto your side take a moment to just curl into a little ball let your back open breathe into the back of your body And as you're ready, let's go ahead and find our way upright. Take your time. If you're enjoying some back body breathing, just hang out there. Sometimes coming into, I, we didn't have time, but what I would have done at the end of our practice is a, um, a supported child's pose with your body resting on a bolster. So I would recommend that at some point today, if you want to Practice some of that back body breathing to support the front of your body and allow the back body to just relax and open. So let's just see if we can feel it even sitting here. Feel the full dimension of your lungs. The responsiveness and pliability of your spine and your ribs as you breathe. Let's place our palms together at our heart and offer your energy. Send your love and care outward. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.